There isn't just one, 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 one way one. to work with AI. Sometimes we need the simple UI, ask the question, get the answer, done. And sometimes we need more tools, rag, evaluations. I've had these needs since my friends and I first created Olama about two years ago in Palo Alto. One of the first front ends for Olama is still one of the best, and that's open web UI. It can be as simple or as complex as you need a front end to be. It certainly isn't perfect. In fact, it's got some pretty significant issues. I originally planned for this video to cover the installation, uh, configuration, and a review, but then I was in the edit of a 40 minute long video. And I realized no one was gonna watch it and see the parts that they actually cared about. So I'm splitting this out to two, maybe three videos, hopefully each a little bit more digestible. This is the install. And it's not a guide to everything you need to install in your setup, but an opinionated take on what I am doing. So let's buckle up and get going. You can approach the installation in different ways. You can set it up on your local machine, and think of it as a, a local app with no authentication. Or you can set it up on a server for your friends and family to use as individual users. I did the local thing last time, but now I want something my wife can use as well. But I don't want the world to see it using my GPU, my API keys, and my other resources. I have this box in the cloud that I've been setting up over the last few videos. It's running on Hostinger, who is also the sponsor of this video. In the past, I've always used DigitalOcean, but I showed in a previous video that a virtual private server or VPS on Hostinger can be just as good, and in fact, better at a fraction of the cost. Now that first video showed getting started with the VPS and I installed N8N on it, which is an amazing automation tool. In fact, I have seen folks suggest that if you're just using AI interactively at a prompt, you aren't getting the most out of it and that you should be using AI in automations to get the full value for you. If you haven't seen that previous video, you should really start there before this one. But the quick summary is that you go to hostinger.com slash mattw and choose a plan. KVM2 seems like the sweet spot for most folks. Before you buy it though, make sure you add the coupon code of MattW to get an extra 10% off the one or two year plan. Now, I know it's scary to commit for that long, but every time I set up a similar server in the past, I, I ended up using it for about that long. After that, choose the OS. I installed Ubuntu with Docker, then go through some steps to secure the server. I made it a bit easier by creating a GitHub repo with a prep script. So clone technovangelist slash home lab, and then run that script. That should get you to a good place where you can start setting up N8N and Caddy. The first video was about setting those up. And then I installed a meta search engine called search NG, which is amazing as well. And now in this video, we can work on a cool Olama front end called open web UI. Now, an important part of each of these videos is using TailScale to connect the boxes and keep them private when needed. TailScale creates this little private network called a tailnet that all of your compute can join. Laptops, servers, phones, tablets. Doing that before was hard, but TailScale makes it just so dang easy. You can be up and running in seconds, really. Now, in these videos, I've been installing everything using Docker Compose. And when using Docker with TailScale, we can either add the TailScale client to the host or to the Docker containers. Well, we aren't actually adding it to the container running our app, but a second container that the app is networked to in a special way. We have to tell the container it should join our tailnet, and we do that with an auth token. Now I have all the compose files in the GitHub repo, but I wanted to make sure that you can pull the latest at any time without breaking your setup. So I found the best way to do that is to put the auth key in a secret. So in TailScale, create the auth key and save it to a file at your home directory, then .config, then ts auth key. The compose files will pick that up and put it into the container in the right place. 
So let's take a look at the compose file for Open Web UI. Actually, before we get into that, if you find videos like this valuable, consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. My goal with this channel is to help you get up to speed with all things Olama, local AI in general, and, and also just using AI to be more effective. The hosted models like ChatGPT and Claude can be great, but there are a lot of times where they're just the wrong solution for the job. And I talk a lot about that here on this channel. And if you want to see these videos when I first release them, consider joining the membership on YouTube or on Patreon. Otherwise, you see them a few days to a week later. Thanks so much for watching, and let's get back to that Docker Compose file for Open Web UI. The file has four main blocks. First, under services, is the main Open Web UI service. This is mounting a volume to save the data to, and then loading all the config from an ENV file. Then there is a special network piece that connects it to our second block, the tail scale service. This is the exact same thing we've used in search ng and n8n. You can see it's expecting an auth token to be passed to it. And that's what you created with that file. That's what that third block is for, taking the file and shoving it into the container. The fourth block is the volume declaration. Since we didn't define a location, it's going to slash bar, slash lib, slash docker, slash volume, slash open web UI, open web UI, slash data. If you ran prep, it made a copy of the example.env to .env. In fact, it did that for all the apps in HomeLab. If you're continuing from the previous video, just make that copy yourself. There are a lot of things that can go into the env file, but I started with some of the easiest and most obvious choices. Open Web UI is, among other things, a front end for Olama. So you should have Olama installed somewhere. It shouldn't be on the hosting or VPS since that doesn't have a GPU. But because Tailscale makes connecting machines to each other so easy, you can run it from whatever box you have with the best GPU. To make sure Tailscale is on there and then go to the Tailscale admin panel and copy the fully qualified domain name for that box and paste it into the Olama base URL along with the port. Then you can put any random string in the secret key. Next is the URL that you want to use for Open Web UI. For this series, I've been using my tvl.st domain, and I thought O would be a good name. So mine is o.tvl.st. We're going to add that to DNS a little bit later. Enable sign up is probably going to be true. When you install it locally, you may want to set it to be false, though. I'm so glad that this is there. The last time I made a video on Open Web UI, there wasn't a way to turn this off. Since I was running locally, it was super frustrating. But next comes enable web search. If you set up search ng in the previous video, then set this to true and set the web search engine to search ng and enter the URL. There's so much more that we can add here to this file. While the docs for Open Web UI tend to suck, like in a huge way. This page is really comprehensive, so you really should review what can be added and then come back and play with those features. Now we can start it up, run docker compose up without that dash D flag the first time. I tend to like to run new containers this way so that the logs are more accessible. To verify is working, go to the Tailscale admin panel and we should see open web UI on Hostinger. Then click on that host, then scroll down to services. You should see one labeled TCP slash 8080. Click the open link, and we should see our web UI running. The first time you start it, you'll need to create an admin login and password. Now, it's great that it works, but I hate having to add a port number every time. I could change the port to 80, but well, that means I can only have a single service responding on port 80 but I have lots of services already and, and more coming soon. Same goes with port 443, which is the default for HTTPS. But then I also have to deal with coming up with a certificate that the browser will trust. So that's where Caddy comes in, specifically the Caddy in the Caddy2 directory. 
Caddy is a reverse proxy. It processes each request as it comes in and forwards it based on rules in a config file. The caddy file has the domain name requested and the machine and port it forwards the request to. So for o.tvl.st, it gets forwarded to open web UI on Hostinger port 8080. And then it has this extra piece that means it'll get the TLS certificate using the Cloudflare DNS plugin for caddy. We added that to caddy in the Docker compose file in the caddy2 directory. In fact, support for plugins is what's different between the caddy and caddy2 directories. Caddy isn't the only option for a reverse proxy. Traffic and Nginx are also really great solutions. And once you get them set up, they can be equally as easy to work with. But getting them to that point where things get easy, well, is a challenge. So Caddy overall is far easier to work with. To get o.tvl.st to get to the right host, we need to set it up in our DNS. Since tvl.st is using Cloudflare for DNS, that's what I'm setting up in this video. Now I want to use o.tvl.st, but I want it to only be accessible for my wife and I. So I'm setting the IP address to the tailnet IP address for the host running caddy. You want to grab both the IPv4 and IPv6 addresses from the Tailscale admin panel. Then in the DNS config, add the A and AAAA records to point to those addresses. A for IPv4 and AAAA for IPv6. Now, some folks like to skip this part, instead using the Tailscale Tailnet domain and not a public domain name. You can totally do that, including getting the cert, and there is plenty of documentation on how to do it on the Tailscale website, but I've never successfully gotten it to work. Maybe I'm just thinking about it in the wrong way, though. But the way I'm doing it works for me. The next part is waiting for DNS propagation to happen. There's no way to speed this up, and no way to know how long it's going to take. I've gotten things to work in as little as 30 seconds, and as long as 10 minutes. Just, just try it, and if it doesn't work, try again. Maybe go get a cup of coffee or, or lunch, and then try it another time. After waiting long enough, you should be able to go to the URL you defined and see the site for Open Web UI running. So what can you do with Open Web UI? And what do I think of it? Well, I wouldn't show you how to install it if I didn't think it was worth it. I want it running on my system, so I must like it in general, and there are a lot of things you can do with it. But this video is long enough just covering the installation so that stuff will come soon, like in the next video. So thanks so much for watching this one. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one when it comes out in the next few days or so. Thanks so much. Bye.